Hello everyone, welcome to Payment Tech Media. In this video, we will install Windows XP on the virtual machine using VirtualBox. So previously, we installed VirtualBox and we did create two virtual machines, installed Server 2019 and Windows 10. Now we want to create new virtual machine and install Windows XP. So to create a new virtual machine, we can just simply click on new and then let's call it Windows XP. For this installation, I'm going to go ahead and use the ISO image I have and it is a 32-bit. So here we can see Windows XP 32-bit and this is a default directory where the virtual machine will be stored. We can change. I'm going to leave it as default and then click next for the amount of the memory. So I'm going to go ahead and assign 4GB, 4096. So 4096 megabyte gives us 4 gigabytes, and um, that's fine. Click next. Here we want to create new virtual hard disk. Select it, create. I'm going to go ahead and use .vhd extension for my virtual hard disk. Next. And by default, dynamically allocated is selected, which here, as we can see, the explanation for dynamic allocated and fixed size. It's basically if we are selecting dynamically allocated, it doesn't take the space right now from our physical disk. It will create this virtual hard disk and then it will take space from our physical hard drive when we have any data on the virtual hard disk. That's dynamically allocated. If we say fixed size, it will take space from physical hard drive right now. So I'm going to leave it as dynamic allocated and then next and the location where the VHD is going to be created and stored. I'm going to leave it as a default directory for the size. I'm going to say 50 gigabytes. And again, it is dynamic allocated. So it doesn't take 50 gigabytes right now from my physical hard disk. It will be up to 50 gigabytes when we have any data moving into the virtual hard disk. So 50 gig should be enough. Create. All right. This is our Windows XP virtual machine. The operating system is not installed yet. We have to go to the settings. So let's go to the settings. And for this installation, I'm going to go ahead and create internal networking. So I'm going to go ahead under network, change NAT to internal network. And then under advanced, I'm going to change it to allow all. And then for the storage here, I want to attach the ISO image. So here for the DVD where it says empty, click and then click here and then choose create virtual optical disk. And here we can add and XP ISO image open, making sure it is selected and then choose. So what I did in the settings of Windows XP virtual machine, I changed the network from NAT to internal network. And then in the storage tab, I assigned ISO image to the disk, the Windows XP ISO image for the installation. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start Windows XP. All right, so here, as we can see, pressing enter to continue or to repair and F3 to quit. We want to do the operating system installation. So we have to press enter and then F8 agreeing and users alliances agreement. And then here, if we want to create any partition by just simply pressing C. And here we can use the entire size or type in the amount of the partition size in megabytes. I'm going to use the entire 50 gig and then press enter. It did automatically create eight megabytes on partition space for the system files, kind of like a reserved partition for the operating system. And here we can see our partition one. It's already highlighted the 50 gig, 51,191 megabytes. And then pressing enter, it will install operating system on the C drive. And on this window, it's asking what type of file system we want to use. And if we want to use a quick format or standard format, it's basically by formatting, it will install the file system and the file system overall structure, the, the operating system will use to be able to access hard drive, be able to read data, be able to organize data. And in this case, this is a virtual hard disk. So I'm going to go ahead with NTFS file system quick format, which it will skip the scan disk, all that. So NTFS file system, quick format, select it and then enter. Now it will go through the process of operating system installation 
and the system will restart a couple of times. If we see the message press any key to boot from disk, we don't want to press any key, we just let the computer continue its installation. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward and I'll be back when the installation finished. Alright, on the regional and language options window we can click next and then for the name and then for the computer name Administrator password, setting the time, and here if you want to set the IP addresses for the network settings, we can select custom settings or we can set the IP addresses later on. So I'm going to go with the typical settings and then next. Right now it's a member of workgroup, but later on we will join it to a domain. So I'm going to leave it as workgroup right now. Next. So here as you can see the installation almost done. Continue. For Windows update we can say not right now. IP addressing we can skip right now. And for the registration, not right now. And for the user account name, and finish. Alright, so here as we can see, Windows XP operating system installation finished. So it is kind of like nostalgic in 2020 uh, when we talk about installing XP and um, so let's have this as a background okay and here in the notification area we can go to the in the system tray we can go to the network adapter and then uh, properties and then our uh, TCP IP and then properties and then set the IP address. So again, the default TCP IP settings is on obtain, obtaining from the HTTP server, but we can just right now set static IP address and use the IP address manually. So 192.168.1.5, I'm just making up uh, IP address, uh, class C192, since the other virtual machines also is on 192.168.1 network. So I'm using the same network, 192.168.1 network. I know 10, uh, we did assign 1.10, Server 2019, we assigned 1.19, and then on uh, XP, we will assign 1.5. So, this is internal networking. We don't need default gateway or um, DNS. We can use DNS because already our domain controller DNS installed everything. So, our server 2019 is also DNS server. So, we can type our server 2019 IP address 192.168.1.19. That's our DNS. Okay and then uh, close and then close also I usually talk about um, in the run command and then let's say ncpa.cpl or in the search text box it opens up the local area connection or the ethernet right now it's called simply right click properties and set the IP address uh, opens up the network connections window pretty much the ncpa.cpl Okay, uh, but we did already change from here. Well, the, in the network status icon, it is hidden, so we cannot see it. Let's go to the run, NTPA, CPL, and properties, we can say show icon. Okay, all right, here we can see. Very good. 
So if I had already my server or Windows 10 up and running, I should be able to ping them. So let's turn on server 2019. And we can turn on our Windows 10. So since previously we installed server 2019 and Windows 10, so here we can see the server 2019 and Windows 10 here. And of course we just installed XP. So after setting up the IP addresses, I should be able to ping and uh, quickly see CMD and then uh, IP config. So for server 1.19 for Windows 10. One dot ten and for XP if I open up run CMD to open up command prompt and then IP config one dot five. Okay, so let's ping one nine two one six eight one dot ten. First I'm pinging um, our Windows ten and then we can ping so it is requesting timed out probably because of the advanced sharing center on Windows ten. So let's see. Network and Sharing Center, and then change Advanced Sharing. So turning on Network Discovery and File Print Sharing on our guest and public. On a private, it's already. Let's turn on. And on the domain, also let's turn on. This is for the Network Discovery makes the computer discoverable and now enables the file sharing. So I should be able to ping. Let's say up arrow, enter, and yep, yeah, from XP, I'm pinging Windows 10, and I should be able to ping my server, ping 192.168.1.19, and yep, yeah, it's pinging server as well. And Windows 10 virtual machine host name, it's called PC1, so I should be able to ping by name as well, since we did set the DNS address on XP, and of course our server is the DNS server, so let's ping. PC1, enter, and yep, it is resolving the name to IP address. That's the purpose of DNS, right? So if I type IP config space forward slash all, I should be able to see the DNS information 192.168.1.19, and this counter 192.168.1.19 is the DNS server and the domain controller. To show you guys on a server, if I open up server manager, And if I click tools, I should be able to see the DNS and DNS installed during when we did promote the server to be a domain controller. Simply going to the server manager, add roles, next, next, adding the DNS and Active Directory services. So this is our DNS on the forward lookup zone. We can see the domain PC1 and server DC. PC1, it's already joined to the domain. Uh, PC2, this computer on XP, host name, we called it PC2. So it's not joined to the domain yet. Alright, so this was an example of installing XP operating system on a virtual machine using VirtualBox. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any question, leave it in the comment section. And to see more tech videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks again and have a good day.